Right, we're mixing up Ristara Lazure, a three to one mix. We've got one part of Ristara Lazure. This colour is usually about two tones darker than the base colour, maybe three tones darker than the base colour. So that, that one part of the colour. And now we're going to have three parts of the Restaro fixative. one. Only mix as much as you need because it won't go through to the next day. It won't just separate back into lazure and fixative. It'll pull the binder out of the paint. The mixture is very thin and it needs to be stirred at least every 10 minutes. Otherwise it'll settle out and you won't be putting the correct translucency on. Easily blended but you do need to keep it agitated. Four of us, we're going to split this between four buckets. And in the meantime, I will show you what we're going to do with it. We've prepared these areas. Glass is sheeted over. It will etch into glass. You have got a day to remove it with a razor blade. We're going to need to keep a wet edge going. So we're going to start at the lower level of this, round the window. We've got scaffold ready and we've got a cherry picker ready for the higher levels. Once we get to about three quarters of the way up, another painter's going to start on this lower level and coat and then the two will meet so that they can keep that wet edge going. And here is a wall that we coated in exactly the same method yesterday. So the main thing is keep the liquid stirred and keep a wet edge going across the surface. That's the most important thing. And then keep working it until it goes off and then leave it alone. So one painter, Peter Watkin, of Peter Watkin's Painters, Newtown, starting in the lower corner. And he's going to work upwards Applying the paint, working it in in all directions. Finishing it with a sort of crosshatch light finish. You need to work it into all of the areas because you can't touch it up. You need to keep an eye on ashlar lines, make sure they don't run. This is not a job you can do with just one painter. You must have at least two, and on a large wall like this, four is ideal. With wet brushes, but later I've got a couple of dry brushes handy just to take away any runs stipple them if they started to dry so that you don't overlap. The break point for this will be into a corner, not on a um, obtuse corner, into an angle. Always working from the base upwards, otherwise a run will come all the way down the building. It won't have had its 12 hours to bond in and when you come down to it you'll lift it off and have a negative run. 
like this, working upwards. If you drop any paint or it runs, it'll run back into wet material and you can just work it in or stipple it in. So the bigger the brush the better, the more the area you can cover, but you'll need a little fitch brush in your pocket just to get into any other areas. So we're now being met from above. Can you come one more block higher on that? And then just lightly taking a dry brush so over. Oh, just getting that nice varied finish. Just so you've got a nice variation but you don't see any obvious crush marks. So it looks like a natural either lime wash finish or a stone finish. So two painters have applied down below and two have now gone up the scaffold to keep the wet edge going. Met them from above. Once they get a bit further up, two painters will start on this side and come up so that the two can meet in the middle. Really, don't paint in full on sun, it'll dry a lot more quickly. Sometimes you absolutely have to. Ideally paint in the shade, you've got a lot longer working time. Two painters are now going to start on the other side, working up the far side of the window, ready to meet above. Just finishing with light strokes, random directions, very lightly, just taking away the runs, creating a nice, varied finish. And you can work it as long as it's wet, and the minute it's dry, you leave it alone. If you absolutely have to touch it then, just stipple it with the dry brush. Yeah. Using a cherry picker to get in here. If the scaffold's tied into the building, obviously you need it moved back. Yeah. You can't touch in those areas. Yeah. Scaffold poles need to be back off the building. As you come to the edges, don't cut in first. Two painters now met the other side of the window. One ready above on the scaffold to carry on. The most important thing is you will see overlaps. 
Cherry picker takes over, this lift's going to be dismantled and moved on around the corner, keeping the wet edge going around onto the next wall. And that is Lazure application. Thank you.